his computer. And the recording is in progress. Hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, welcome to our little Monday get together. And uh, uh, today I'm using a new microphone. Tell me if I sound okay. Do I sound okay? Okay. I you see. Here's boy. There, there's one phone here that I'm worried about. Uh, let me see here. Uh, well, let me admit uh, Mandy O'Brien. Let me admit Paul Levin. Let me admit uh, Charlene Solis, Andrew Deutsch, Edward Berger, and Len. Uh, let me see here. Edward Berger is coming on. Now, we have one that says Edward's phone. You didn't try to call on another. No, 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 no. That's an imposter. That's an imposter? That's right. Okay, well, uh, I guess I, I can't. You know, what I'm asking everybody to do is, if you're going to come on here, try to get on, just list your real name. Now, I know there are some people that will try to use other real names, like an Andrew Deutsch or whatever, because we know that Andrew Deutsch is a phony, right? My, my, right. my, real, my real name is Unindicted Conspirator, uh, number seven and three quarters. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. All right. So, you know. That's my real name. I apologize for using this okay. fake Andrew. Now, I wonder if we phone. trust Edward's phone, but what Edward's phone, if you're listening, Edward, change your name there. I don't yeah. know, but Edward's phone makes much sense. Mm. Maybe we could try to get him on, but then we might see something filthy. <laughs> uh, I thought that was my job. Uh, that was your job. <laughs> yeah, that's your job. Exactly. Okay. Anyway, how's my microphone sound? Good? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. Sounds a hundred percent. All right. It should be. It should be. It cost that didn't cost that much. This is actually cheaper for the cheapest microphone I've ever owned. Uh, but I have this whole new thing that it doesn't uh it's uh it uh how can I put it? It it's a it's a it's on a stand. It's not on a stand like the old one was. It's like on a boom. That's what I'm looking for. So we, you know, it's a whole new way of doing it. It's way, it's below here. So you, you don't see it anyway. Good. I'm glad it sounds okay. I don't know who Edward's phone is, but he doesn't seem to be giving up. <laughs> uh, Edward's iPhone. Huh? Oh, man, what the... <laughs> Forget, let him. Should I try him? Nah, if I try him, then he can get on. Because, see, the other show I do, I do it using another thing, and I'm on a different switcher. And so, therefore, I just put my face up there. Mm. And uh, that makes it, you know, so that if somebody is trying to send something across, they can do it all they want. I just get rid of them, and they don't. the audience doesn't see it. But mm. I can't do it with this because I'm doing this directly over uh, over Zoom. So, but everyone's here. There's Mandy down in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and uh, of course, there's Sherilyn Solis out there in California. And also um, the uh, uh, wonderful and attractive Paul Levin, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and uh, we have Edward Berger. That's right. <laughs> you, you can say that. I'll, you say that and then I'll, I'll, I'll mouth it. And the uh, fabulous Edward Berger. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Len LaFrisco. Hello, Len. Good afternoon, sir. Yes. And uh, Andrew Deutsch. Howdy. Uh, and Marjorie Miller. And <laughs> Charlie Wallace. And, of course, the lovely and attractive Mike Chisholm up there in Canada. Hey, everybody. Our Hello. Canadian friend. Okay. I want to ask Charlie, how are you doing with that weather? <laughs> Sweating a lot. Oh, God. You sent a thing on uh, Facebook, was it, where you listed yeah. all the, showed all the different uh, amounts of, uh, of temperature that you've count. been getting down there? Yeah, yeah. It's our uh, 31st consecutive day of over 100 degree temperatures. That's amazing. That's a new record for the city of Austin since they've been keeping records. Wow. But you, you all realize there's no such thing as global warming. Nope. <laughs> and right. a 10-day forecast is for 100 degrees every day. Oh. Try, and, try and tell that to most of the people in the United States of America. 
<laughs> how's how's the heat down in Atlanta? I would think it would be unbearable down there, but I maybe it's not. I mean, it's in the nineties. Yeah, we're in the what are we right now? We're eighty one here in New York. Where you're coming next week? Is it or when? Yeah, uh, the twenty fifth. Oh, okay. So it's two weeks from now, and, yeah. and two weeks from now, you'd just be sitting by my side. On the twenty eighth, hopefully, yes. Yes. Okay. So all right. Lucky, lucky man. Is that oh. 103, Charlie? Right now, yeah. Ugh, right now. Oh, boy. It's only 90 here right now, but we're fixing to have a really bad storms. Oh, really? So we're really I, might, I might have to peace out and drive home. So I get home. You might have to peace out and what? And drive home really quick because we've had My some home. really bad Oh, okay. Like, oh. Yeah. I can understand why. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. So anyway, uh, let me see. What is there anything? What are we? What are we? What are we watching, Marjorie? Lincoln Lawyer. We finished the Lincoln Lawyer. Oh. Not a bad series. Not bad. But oh, we we watched uh, all of all the first season of Foundation, oh. and then all the present uh, versions of this year's uh, Foundation, and um, not bad. Not bad at all. Did you see it, Charlie? You seem to nod your I head. don't have Apple Plus, so no, I haven't. Are you familiar with the books by Isaac oh, Adams? I've only read them about 25 times. Really? Wow. That good, huh? Yeah, well, I started reading them in 1957, so yeah. Is that, <laughs> was that when he wrote it? No, he wrote it He wrote it back in the 40s. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. It's amazing it took him this long to make a, a TV show or something out of it. Yep. I'd love to have you see it so that you could tell me uh, whether you are you like it, you know, because somebody who has already seen it, I mean, read it, uh, to then see it, I, I'd love to get their opinion on it. Yeah. Um, but it's, I'm sure it, I'll get Apple Plus soon. Yeah, they keep moving ahead really fast. Like now it's 130 years later. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the way it is in the books. Yeah. It's, yeah, it goes over a thousand years over the course of the books. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. It's uh, it's a, it's kind of like uh, if I had to give it an equivalency, I would say it was the equivalent of uh, oh, I don't know, Lord of the Ring. What 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 would we say it was like? You know, it uh, it had kind of a, a epic feeling of something yeah. Tolkien would do. You know. Uh, but we watched uh, we watched all of them, uh, and they're in their new season. No, it's supposed to be really good. Everybody I talked to this watched it, loved it. Okay, because we it, what happens with these things? The effects, is, the effects are incredible. The, the 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 production values are without peer. I mean, they're really incre incredible. Uh, but uh, it's the kind of thing that uh, I I love the fact that we watched the whole first year. And then we watched the first four episodes of this year, but now after going through that binging, we have to wait a week. <laughs> and then we have to I wait another that. week. What? I hate when I, I watch something that's great and then I got to wait a whole week before I can see the next episode. Yeah, I think the best thing to do is that we should have waited till the end of uh, till Foundation <laughs> Season 2 was through being done. Yeah. And just, you know, the hell with it, you know. But when, anyway, that's what we did. And then we watched The Lincoln Lawyer. That's our life, by the way. That's what we do. I do. Hey. It's true. <laughs> we just watch one TV show after another. Although Marjorie and I can't agree on them. So we don't watch the same stuff. Uh, like my current, my current favorite show is Riverdale. The Archie and Veronica thing that they did. Archie and... Uh, uh, Betty and Veronica and Jughead. Now you think that's kind of stupid, but this show isn't stupid. It's dealing with a lot of the '50s issues, like the uh, you know the uh, Un-American Activity Subcommittee hearings and censorship of comic books and things like that. And it's really, really good this year. Have you been watching? It looks like you've been watching it, Mike. Have you? My best friend loves that show. Swears by that show. I just haven't gotten into it yet, 
but I know Candy and I are going to for sure. Is well, it still it, the same? Like, because I watched it for the first couple of seasons, and then I just quit watching it, and then I just felt like I wasn't going to be able to catch up. So, is it still the teenagers that? If you go to this season, it reboots the entire show back into the comics from the fifties. Okay. All, all so of a sudden, Jughead is wearing that silly hat that Jughead wears. So it's different from the what it started out. Yeah, it's, it's like something wrong. happens and they get thrown back into the past. And okay. now it's like all Archie, Veronica, Jughead, the whole bunch mm -hmm. of characters as they were in the 50s and in the comic books. But the subjects are dead serious. Yeah. You know? It's about women's sexuality and things like that. I mean, it's really good this year. And the reason I watch it every week, of course, is that I watch it with Shecky. <laughs> because it was, yeah. was Shecky's favorite show that we had both enjoyed together. And I now sit down, lie down, watch it, and have an ongoing discussion with Shecky about what he thinks <laughs> about that episode. And we watch it together because I figure he's got to watch it. He's got to see it. Because I'm sorry that when people die, they can't see what happens next week on the show they love. You know? uh, what are you going to say, Mike? No, no, no. I totally uh, get that that uh, that logic. Uh, yeah. There are times where, like, it used to be about this, this way about Star Wars for me. When I knew three new Star Wars movies were coming out, I cannot die until after those movies come out. And then every... <laughs> Every time that happens, something new comes out, and I'm like, okay, I can't die till after I Then after that. they came out, you said I may as well have died before this. No, I'm not that guy. <laughs> I like them all. I'm, you like the, you all. like the last three Star Wars? Yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely. Why well, am I wrong? They were dreadful. No, they weren't dreadful. Um, because George I, Lucas couldn't direct traffic. <laughs> Well, George yeah, Lucas he, didn't he, direct he, those episodes. No, he can write. Yeah, he the last three, he directed all of them. No, J.J. Yeah. Abrams did. No, oh, oh, you mean the most recent ones? Oh, I wasn't even talking about non-Star Wars movies. I was talking about the first six Star Wars movies. Oh, okay, no. Seven, eight, nine. I thought you meant seven, eight, nine. The last yeah. ones were just, they were just commercial. You know, they were created as a commercial mm -hmm. entity, and that was about it. Okay. You know, and, my and, very favorite Star Wars movie of all time used to be The Empire Strikes Back. Now it's Rogue yeah. One. It's what? Rogue, Rogue One. One. Rogue One. Yeah, I like the series Andor that they made from Rogue One. I yeah, like I'm in the middle of that. Yeah, it, that was an incredibly interesting. I showed it to Marjorie, oh. and she actually liked it. She kind of fought it for the first couple of episodes, and then she kind of got into it. But by the way, if I mention it to her now. Do you remember Andor Marjorie? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I forgot her to I watch. No idea. All of them. Remember no. about the guys? Kind of like it's almost kind of like spies in space. I mean, yeah. it's a, a whole thing where this guy oh. is trying to help overthrow the uh, uh, the empire or whatever, and uh, he's doing it through spy-like means. You know. So. Right. It's very interesting. It's so, it's like, Most right. people remember the show when you say, "Do you remember when the guy went to the to jail? When he went to the space mm. prison? Do you remember that?" Most people remember that part. Remember he goes to the space prison, Marjorie. <laughs> <laughs> you remember no. the space prison? You, you don't remember that? I, I don't remember the series. You know, I did. I actually watched it a second time so I could show it to her, and I guess I wasted my yeah. time. Oh, it's so good. I watched something the second time because you didn't watch it the first time with me. You can only name one thing. There. You go, oh. well, go ahead, name it, name it, and I'll tell them why. Go ahead, tell them. I forget the name. <laughs> <laughs> Are you see what I'm talking about? This is what I'm living with on a daily basis now. Don't ever, memory issues. don't ever marry somebody as old as she is, okay? Because <laughs> there we go. We probably even forget your wedding, you know. Marjorie, it was Peaky Blinders, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Yes. I said that. No, you didn't. Well, I thought it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we're, all, we're all psychic, okay? Uh, uh, no, Peaky Blinders. 
which I didn't, I couldn't watch after the first episode because I couldn't understand a word they were saying. And then they put it on uh, Netflix or someplace like that. I can't remember where they put it. Where subtitles. We, we could put subtitles on. It was Netflix. Put subtitles on. And once the subtitles were there, I love the show. I can understand it. You, it you can't great. watch that show without subtitles. What are you watching these days, Andrew? Oh, I, what did I watch? I, I I sat with my wife and watched that uh, the the summer I turned pretty. Boy, that was exciting. Oh boy, uh, it yeah. sounds exciting. That looks like yeah. a, it looks like a girl's show. No, it was, but I'm I'm not home enough to. Since I'm working out of state, if she wants to watch it, I'll watch it. I stayed awake, so I think that was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And then I watched I watched that ridiculous thing, Twisted Steel, that Will Arnett produced. No. About this in the future where the guys are post, you know, post whatever the war was, and everything outside of these villages is dangerous, and the guys driving cars from place to place. They've got a crazy clown who's killing people. It was a pretty pretty good piece of crap. To Wait, watch are you too. talking about Twisted Metal? Yeah, isn't that what I said? Oh, you said Twisted Steel. I didn't yeah, know they. Made, I didn't know that show was out. Was same it good? Shit. No, based on a wait video minute, game. Wait a minute. Did you hear? Did you hear him? Did you hear our friend from Canada? I wasn't. I, I wasn't Was speaking. It? I wasn't speaking Canadian. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> no. But did you listen to him? He said, "I didn't know it was Oot." <laughs> did I? <laughs> Oot. Right on. It's based on a video game. It's out, eh? <laughs> it's out. Eh? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No, I've been so busy. I haven't been watching much like I normally do, but I watched two very bad things that and the summer I turned pretty. Yeah. I'm sure if I wait a few more years when the testosterone levels get lower, I might enjoy it. I'm sure that it was there and I didn't care about it. <laughs> you know. when, I, when I get old next week, when you get boot, old. Anyway. Hmm? Old. Wait, Charlie, what's your t-shirt say today? It's weird being the same age as old people. Isn't <laughs> <laughs> that, that the truth? Well, you're not really the same age as old people because you're only, what, 71, 72? 73 is pretty old. 73? <laughs> yeah. That's eh, 10 years younger than me. <laughs> you know. And, and, and you know, then we, you and I could get together and we could go up to Canada and we could go see uh, 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 Mike and uh, go oot together. <laughs> we can have some poutine. It'll be fantastic. Poutine. <laughs> yeah. Explain poutine, will you, to the people who aren't aware of that? And I'm, I, I'm just aware of it because we had Revelstoke Jim on this network for a while. And, you know, he always talked about poutine. What is Was it Revelstoke Jim or Revelstoke Bill? Jim. Jim. Okay. Um, so yeah, poutine is like, so the original recipe is French fries with cheese curds and then piping hot gravy on top. So this piping hot gravy melts down the cheese curds and it's gravy fries with cheese. But there are like actual poutineries here. We've got a poutinerie in my city and, and there's all sorts of- They call them poutineries? There are poutineries. There are, there are food trucks that are poutine- Flavored, uh, you know, flavored uh, and, uh, food. And trucks. do people line you up? Say for... cheese turds. Cheese curds. <laughs> cheese curds. No, that uh, sounds appetizing, then. Yeah. To see. yeah. <laughs> Let it stay in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> and then there are many variations. Uh, like I like bacon on mine, uh, but there's all sorts of different variations of of, of poutine that you can get. And. You... and... And you guys have universal help, right? Uh, thank goodness <laughs> we do, yeah. yeah. Just checking. Asking for a friend. <laughs> yeah, we have another poutine crisis. Here come the ambulances. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let me ask you this, though. What, what, is that, uh, what is that guy who has all those places to eat that's very popular up there? Tim Horton? Tim Horton. Tim Horton. Oh, yeah. Tim Hortons. They're owned by Burger King now, but yeah. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Well, what was their claim to fame? The best poutine in Canada? <laughs> Tim Horton was a hockey player. He played for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah. And uh, he started a, a coffee and donut shop called Tim Hortons. He died. And um, the chain 
kept going and endured and it has gone all the way across Canada originally started as a as a coffee and donut shop was known for the best coffee um, and uh, that has since well a lot of people have think it's it has changed significantly since they got bought out but yeah they are a gigantic bought out. he said bought out folks we yeah. made <laughs> he said yeah. bought out yeah okay from the good the good folks at burger king so the food has the food has gotten significantly worse but it has streamlined very 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 franchisey very very um uh yeah it's 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 a it's a fast food joint now okay all right but they used to be very pop it's still very popular i would imagine i i i wouldn't be surprised if it's the most popular franchise in canada Okay. I, I think there's more Tim Hortons in my city than there are subways for Do sure. Do you go to Tim Hortons occasionally? Um, occasionally, yes. My wife and I, if we're driving to Vancouver, there's one right on the way out of town. Mm -hmm. We'll usually stop there for we we call it junk food on the for the road. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you always have to stop at junk food places on the road. Yeah, we enjoy road trips uh, with with bad food. So yeah, and road food. I think I actually got nauseous on some road food once. And we, I think it was with Shecky and we were driving across the country and we just stopped. We would stop in the morning, usually at a Burger King or something to get breakfast. And then we'd get on the road and we'd start driving. But then you get hungry around noon. And so you look at places on the side of the road and go, ah, that looks like it'd be okay. And I think one of them I got deathly ill from. Oh. So, yeah. But road food is usually fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so um, uh, let me see here. Where were we? Uh, so we're talking about, let's see here, about our wonderful uh, TV shows that we watch. Uh, what else are we doing, Marjorie, that's interesting and exciting? That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> the highlight of my day. <laughs> I've been writing letters to the lawyer. That's, that's, that's the current thing. And I never get any response back from him. It's almost like he he's not my lawyer, but he is. So I don't know. We're all paid up, right? Yep. Okay. So he's gotten his, you know, he's only gotten like something like 110000 maybe $120,000 from us. So <laughs> he should be willing to answer my calls occasionally. But who knows? Maybe not his biggest customer anymore anymore yeah well we we have this uh lease thing that it just doesn't stop you know these people just don't stop with us yeah uh and now they're they're sending us a renewal for like two thousand dollars more and they can't do that because they have to base it on the old lease and so we're fighting that and you have to fight it you can't just say Hey, please send me in the correct amount. Here's the reason why. Here's the lease you signed. Here are the riders you signed. And all the all the things have been met. Send us a goddamn lease in our name. And we can't sign a lease that isn't uh, isn't for the correct amount because we would be then obligating ourselves to that amount and saying it was a correct amount. So anyway, one thing after another. Never hey, Alex. Yeah. We were talking about this last week. A couple of days later, I, I I thought of something. Are they they're doing this not just to you, but to other residents of the building as well, right? No, no, we have no idea. I know of no. They have oh, a lot okay. of court cases, Alex. Yeah, they, they they this guy it's a guy over at the uh, landlords who doesn't want to admit that they lost, and that the judge said that the uh, uh, admittedly it's a low rent. You know, five hundred dollars and seven cents a month was. What was the amount he said they had to charge? So eventually we got a lease in that amount signed by the landlord and a rider that said that he could only go as high as the, uh, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the uh, rent appellate, court, appellate court uh, to get uh, a redress of his grievances. And he lost that. So it means it's, it's 500, but now they send us a lease and it's for like 2000 some odd. And uh, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to base it on the, the basis is the original lease, the amount that that started at. Okay. And the, uh, 
and and uh, you know, then they we also signed an extra thing about that we if the appellate court uh, prevailed and they got uh, a higher rent from the appellate court. We abide by that uh, retroactively, but it turned out they went to the appellate court and the appellate court unanimously turned them down and sent it back to our judge and said that's that's what's up. So we're fine. You know, we're all legal. It's just that it takes so much to get him to change it. He won't do it. He's stubborn. Oh, I'm going to one more last appeal to the Court of Appeals. Well, that doesn't matter. You said you would only go to the appellate court, and that's where it ended once and for all. So the fact that you're going to a Court of Appeals is going to turn you down because you were we were unanimously upheld in the appellate court, and they won't okay. even talk to you. You know, it goes on and on and on. Yes. It's just so comp. It's so ridiculously complicated, you know. So now I have to file an appeal to the state that they didn't do right by the, uh, you know, the, the renewal. It's it's ridiculous, just ridiculous. So, I mean, we'll be here. Don't worry about that, you know. Either that or we've decided if they try to evict us before they get us out the door, we'll commit multiple suicide here. And uh, make them feel bad. Yeah, like a landlord ever felt bad. Did, did you try the freedom of speech defense? I hear it's very powerful. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or uh, how about um, I did what my lawyers told me to do? Yeah, that'll work. That, that's a defense, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. It was, I, just, it was just political speech. Don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, what a... What a stupid country we live in right now, right? I mean, it's Unbelievable. Amazing. It's amazing the kind of things which are out there that we, we deal with each and every day. Um, but uh, And it's amazing the amount of stuff that we're not dealing with. What do you mean, not, not dealing with? We're not dealing with the environment. I mean, they're coming back to Congress and there's no, you know, resolution as to the budget they haven't even worked that out yeah but i mean why you know can't don't they go back home and they i guess they must have really good air conditioners and low electric bills <laughs> i don't know uh, but if, if they don't admit that there's something wrong going on out there and that we i don't know what we can do about it at this point you know uh, we should have started doing whatever we we're going to do 20 years ago and then we would have not been in the mess we're in right now with this weather. But all of it is terrible. It's just terrible. How's the weather where you are, uh, um, uh, uh, Paula? <laughs> um, 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 um. <laughs> I'm oh, not sure. Rain. What's, uh, it's it's raining out it's, uh, at the moment. Yeah, but, uh, but I do have. Uh, um, I had a surprise this week. Uh, and the surprise was that that um, I went to see a movie I was not expecting to like, and I liked it a lot. Oh, really? Yeah. What was it? Barbie. Mar <laughs> yeah. I knew you were going to say that. Ah. See, Mar it's not at all. I mean, I and I had read the reviews. I knew that it wasn't a children's movie. I knew that it was Greta Gerwig, and I knew that it was. And then talked about Ryan Gosling, and and uh, but it was clever, and it was and it was funny. And it is definitely not for children. I, I have no idea what other people thought about the, the movie that are that are arrayed here before me, but it's it, um, and it also is not anti-male, although it does make fun of it makes fun of of, of guys to some mm -hmm. degree, yeah. but it makes fun of a lot of stuff on a, on a broad. So I don't know. Uh, um, uh, has anybody ever has anybody else seen it? Our, our friend Steve Bender wrote a nasty review of it on Facebook. It's pretty funny. Oh, really? Oh, what did yeah. he say about? It? What did he say about it? Be, beware! It's a ploy, something or other. I don't, I don't have it here in front of me, but I read oh. it and laughed out loud because I, I couldn't believe he went to see it in the first place. Mandy, did you see it? I did. Okay. Well, I was just the think? opposite. Where I thought I was, I had made a post about it a couple of months ago. Like I'm going to see the Barbie movie. I can't wait. And I, I don't know if I just and dense I just don't I felt like I didn't get it when I walked out of the theater I was like oh I didn't really I just was disappointed I thought that it was going to be just be more laugh out loud like I didn't know it was going to be so deep it was kind of deep you know what I mean but yes it was yes yes it was 
So I, I don't know. I probably could watch it again and get more out of it. You know, I was just expecting something different. Well, we're, we're, we're going to see Oppenheimer next week, finally, because that was the closest date we could get seats. Well, that, the we're seats going. that you want, yeah. Yeah, uh, unless we wanted to, unless we wanted to bring a wheelchair, then we could get it <laughs> <instead of laughs> going. Uh, but um, I, if we go to see Oppenheimer, you want to then go see Barbie? Not me. See, See, like um, I, I would not have seen it, but I was going with with uh, I was, uh, I was there, was there was a good reason for me to be along. I, I had, had no plans to see it, and I was really pleasantly surprised. You're I definitely like the majority out on TV. You're definitely in the majority, Paula. That's I mean, I think I'm the weird one. Like I even saw a meme today, and I laughed because it was like. I hate when there's a movie that's universally liked and I don't like it. Because I think <laughs> Do you know the film has made over a billion dollars worldwide now? Yeah, a lot of exhibitors are saying it saved the summer for them. It saved the summer for the exhibitors. Yeah. Well, not only that, but I heard that uh, or read somewhere that that it um, it passed the censors because they didn't understand what it was in China. And now it's causing a lot of trouble because um, it's it's kind of anti-Chinese pr propaganda because it talks about women's rights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's interesting though that that we have two divergent opinions here. Uh, but you, I, you know what it was? I think Mandy went expecting something, and you went expecting nothing. I was I, I read enough about it to to sort of expect it, but I um, mean you know like you remember the 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 uh, um, two thousand and one the how that started with the uh, uh, with the um, with um, the uh, prehistoric thing and 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 the, and that's how that's how this movie starts. But it starts with little girls playing with their baby dolls, and then they smash the baby dolls. And then, and then, and then there's this, 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 this whole thing about, and then there was. Well, I mean, it, it, it was a takeoff on 2001, a space odyssey. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, um, and it goes from there. It's, it's very, very clever. And it's really kind of fair about, uh, about, um, about both genders, uh, uh, about what happens to both genders uh, being, um, Kind of like in their super cubby holes, but Ryan Gosling is absolutely wonderful. Um, yeah, he was my favorite. He was definitely my favorite in the movie. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's amazing that this movie is getting the kind of rave reviews that it's getting, and that people like yourself are accepting it. You know, because you're you're you know you you don't go for crap. You know, you're kind of snotty. generally not generally yeah. not. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't take the children or the grandchildren. It's not it's not. Oh, not that kind yeah. of yeah. well it, I think so many people that took their little kids to see it like on facebook and i'm like oh geez yeah. all of it went ahead like there's well, no I way think the worst thing that would happen is the kids would be disappointed yeah the they were bored I, there were a couple of little kids in the movie and and they were bored they didn't get it right of course yeah well it, what happened was they made a billion dollars worldwide and they say now that mattel's coming out with a new barbie called billionaire barbie <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> But she, as a woman, she has uh, hit the record for a woman making money for a movie. She's the first billionaire uh, drawing. Greta Gerwig? Yeah, Greta Gerwig, yeah. She wrote, it, she wrote it with her husband. Yeah, yeah, right. Just before this, the picture by a woman that made the most money was Wonder Woman. But it didn't uh, make, I don't think it made a billion worldwide. I mean, this is amazing. And, it, and it's a billion worldwide only a few weeks after release. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I'm interested in seeing it. You know, I think, that, but I don't know if I'm going to go to a theater to see it. I'll watch it on television. You'll watch maybe. it on TV. You know, well, maybe one day I will sneak off to the movies without you and go see it. <laughs> I'll wait for television. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, it, uh, I, I'd say, when will it be? It'll wind up being on, um, 
well, it'll wind up happening. What, 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 who put out the film? What company put the film out? I think it was Universal, if I'm not mistaken. And if it's Universal, it'll be shown on Peacock. So that, so that would, that's where, that's what Ken's going to get with his money so he doesn't have that smooth problem anymore. The Peacock? Yeah. <laughs> Go see the point movie. In the movie does, does yeah, Ken, you, you, yeah, does, yeah. Does Ken, you'd like it, Andrew. No, no more, think, no more ridicule. In the movie, I, I, I think you'd like it, Andrew. Take your wife. No, uh, she doesn't. Let me, let me ask you this: In the movie, does uh, Ken take his pants off and there's nothing there? I feel like they made. Oh, you, you get, you gave me the um, the opening. Uh, in the movie, Barbie uh, um, goes to the, into the real world and she's walking down a street in a real city and a bunch of construct construction workers are giving her a hard time. And she says something about she has a boy, uh, she has a friend and his name is Ken. Anyway, and, and she says, no, no, you don't understand. I don't uh, I don't have a vagina and he doesn't have a penis. And that's of course true, you know. Like, gosh. <laughs> but yeah, but in the movie, it really lands. It's really funny. That is not a kid joke. Oh, no. that is my not point. A kid joke. <laughs> my point. <laughs> See, and I feel like they, when they were marketing it, it was really clever marketing. But they also just gave you such tiny tidbits, like you didn't. So you yeah. didn't know what to expect. You didn't, you didn't know what to expect. So I thought it was just going to be a lot more comical and not right. so thought provoking. You know? Right? No, it's sly. It's not like uh, yeah. knee, knee slap or funny. No. Right. Right. If you really want to, Marjorie waste your still money, refuses to see it in spite I of the. Said I'll watch it on TV. If you want to, <laughs> if you want to really waste your ticket dollars, go see Mission Improbable. Is a piece of crap. It was was it not good? Because I was yeah, thinking twenty. If there's twenty minutes of it, that the effects are kind of cool. The rest of it is the same movie you've already seen. The acting is ridiculously bad. Uh, okay, tell me. And, I'm and an you get man. and you get after two hours and forty five minutes, and it's only part one. Oh, even, oh really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. How long is it for real? Is it is two hours and forty something minutes for part oh, one? Oh God! Wow. Oh. Okay, never mind. Has anybody here seen the Spider Verse oh. movie? Two hours and forty something minutes. What, what movie? Oh God! No. Has anybody seen? Sorry, I didn't mean uh, to. Like, it seems like Spider Verse oh. movie. No. No. What's yeah. that? The, what? As, what? That's the latest uh, Spider Man animated. Seen, film. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, like, it seems like Spider Verse oh. movie. No. no. What's yeah. that? Yeah. What? As, that's the latest uh, Spider. Oh yeah, I got. I got to kill oh, something here. Hold on a second. Hold on. That's the latest Spider Man. Oh yeah, I got. I got to kill something. Let's do the time warp again. Hold on a second. I got it. Come on. Oh yeah. Oh boy. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a moment. Wait a moment. Moment. I'm trying to figure okay. out. Okay, I'm, I'm going to log yeah. out this time. Oh, okay. I'm leaving. Um, I'm echo. The crazy there we go. Animal. There we go. I muted it. I muted it. Hi, Manny. Hi. Next week. What do you mean goodbye? Manny's got to leave. If you say thunder, that means the crazies in Atlanta get out on the road and start acting like. So you got to go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Drive right, safe. I will. Be safe. Be safe. We Bye. all love you. Bye. Love well, now, thank God she's gone. <laughs> I thought she'd never leave. Yeah, I thought she'd never leave. Uh, I had to take care of the sound somewhere. The audio was doubling over here. Yeah. And, uh, anyway. Uh, what was that? Oh, I just, I, I, I put it on to see if it was running on, uh, on uh, what do you call it, Facebook. And I have audio that was coming off Facebook, so I had to muted so that's the problem but now it's fine and i can see all of you are on there looking good and that's important anyway so um uh you know i mean it's um i'll tell you what's uh, got, one movie that got to me was i was watching um um uh, what do you call it uh, guardians of the galaxy episode three. Oh, good well here's the thing no, I have a tendency to doze off watching television. I don't know why. There's something about the TV now that's getting to me. And but if it's exciting or something's going on, I don't doze. All right. 
So I watched that movie and I dozed past all of the action sequences, <laughs> oh. which, which left me about maybe 12 minutes of movie. <laughs> and that 12 minutes is really good. <laughs> you know, it had a very nice ending and kind of polished the whole thing up uh, and it finished it up. I'm saying that the 12, there are 12 minutes and they're worth watching, but then they go to action sequences and I can't take action sequences anymore because nobody's actually getting hit. Nobody's actually getting thrown or, and nothing's happening like that. It's just so quickly cut that they give you the feeling something's happening. And I just, I don't, how many action sequences do you need in one movie? Give me pl the thing I liked about the original Guardians of the Galaxy is it was a good storyline, you know, and you invested yourself in the characters, but there wasn't a lot of action in that. But then the latest one is just nonstop action, and I'm going, you know, can I give me a movie that is sci-fi that has plot and characters and occasionally an action sequence? I absolutely agree. Yeah, instead, they're all actions. Is, is that the old man in me, Mike? Well, I loved Guardians of the Galaxy 3, but, like, my wife cried, like, three times in that movie. Like, she loved it, too. But we watched the first two, and then we went and saw the third one. So, like, I thought it buttoned it up very, very nicely. I thought there was overarching a beginning, a middle, and an end. And if you look at it that way through three movies the climax is going to be in the third movie, right? So there would be more right. action. That's kind of the way that I would look at that. But because it does, it is a story from beginning to end between the three movies for sure. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. But I mean, it, it, it's, it's a kind of a, Oh, I don't know. It's kind of, I just, the, the action stuff just is getting to me. You know, I need more than action to keep me going. But they feel they have to do all these action sequences because they don't want to dissipate, disappoint their audience. Yeah, so Alex, the love their action. They, remember, I mean, remember the comedian uh, Gary Mule Deer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a documentary. Out about him. There's a documentary out that's really good about his life. That guy's got like a hundred lives. Mm -hmm. really? it's, it's it's really worth watching. I've got to watch it then because I you'll I, like it. Alex Dave's in it. Hmm? You'll like it. it. Dave's in it. Dave was like his unknown uh, uh, sponsor of part of his life. Yeah, well, if I yep. said Gary Mule Deer to these people here, how many people know who Gary Mule Deer was? I do. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Okay. You do, Andrew? You oh, yeah. He's hilarious. Yeah. He was, I, I, I read about him in Steve Martin's book years ago when he wrote the book about stand up and then had to figure out who he was and started watching his comedy stuff. Because him and Steve Martin used to be roommates before Steve Martin was famous. Before Steve Martin was even wearing the white suit, he was buddies with Gary Muldeer. Oh. He okay. wrote about it in his book. But the Muldeer was a drug addict. He was a gambler. He was all these things. And all these famous people just sort of kept him alive while he got himself sober. Where's the documentary? I uh, can't say where I saw him. It was... It you, wasn't can a, you can tell us. I bet... I, <laughs> No, it's one of those is. weird channels that just sort of pops up on your Amazon Fire Stick when you're not looking. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, no, I, I could think be, I can uh, connect you with a copy of it, Alex. Either that, or I can probably go to uh, YouTube and it's probably there. Not yet. No, not there yet. It's too new. Oh, it's but too it's, new. Oh, yeah. okay. you can hook me up with a copy. He's not here today, but the first person uh, who is thanked in the special uh, special thanks is Don Giller. Really. I believe it. Yeah. Don, if you're listening, you're in the Mule Deer documentary. Or you're oh, he, oh, he knows. He, he definitely knows. Well, well, he knows why he was in the Is that where they got the footage from? Uh, well, I would assume. Yeah. But there's there's all new stuff with Dave, though. It's not just stock stuff. Like, Dave tells a hilarious story about Mule Deer with business cards. That is just, it's fantastic. Like, yeah. But I mean, there's it, old stuff for sure. Yeah. I've got to, I want to see this documentary. It's, it's really good. Alex Winter has a new documentary on the, the history of YouTube that's supposed to be really good. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, I want to see that. That's oh. rad. Yeah. Is, that, is that the history of boredom? Is that it? No, no, no. <laughs> it's about how pervasive it is and how it began and what it became when it got bought out by Google. I was listening to an interview with him about it. I'm, I'm trying to find it so I can see it. Oh, it's extremely successful. Oh, yeah. Well, it's owned by it's Google's front page now. I mean, Google owns it and it's part of the, it's the second biggest search engine, but 
it didn't start out that way. So yeah. Who who's I'm trying to remember who started it. Some tech nerds. Yeah. And and I remember it, it was just a whole thing of you put your videos up. That's it. Yeah. yeah. But they probably had to sell out because they probably wound up, you know, ran out of server space or whatever. Yeah. Well, Alex's Alex's documentary on the the Zappa movie was incredible. If you're a Frank Zappa fan, and yeah. now he's done a bunch of other. He did a documentary about the dark web and where it came from and how it became. And his his documentaries are fantastic. Really? Yeah, he's that guy that was Bill from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And what's his name again? Alex Winter. Winter. I'll yeah. have to look him up on YouTube. Yeah, his he was the guy that was the one of the uh, Bill for Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, yeah. and after that he went into making these these great documentaries, but on obscure stuff. Yeah, good stuff. They're, but he they're... did the thing on uh, YouTube. Yep. Yeah, yeah, the story of YouTube. He did the dark web. He did one. Well, the, the Zappa one. I said. I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. Uh, he Silk was, Road. He was, that was his. Yeah, right? Silk Road. Silk Road. Yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah, was yeah. what I was thinking. Wow. That's, that's winter, like the season. Is that? Yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. yeah. Alex Winter. I'll have to look that. I have to look up his stuff. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I, wouldn't it be amazing if YouTube didn't run the, uh, wasn't on YouTube? <laughs> I heard he's working on the uh, Alex Bennett documentary, but he's, he's having a hard time finding <laughs> people to talk about. The only problem with that is <laughs> it's only going to be five minutes long. <laughs> about six. That's but they're six. good minutes. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I used to be a big shot. <laughs> yeah. Used um, to be somebody. <laughs> sounds like Dana Carvey talking about when he was, he did a I think sitcom I'm gonna with, I think with I'm Rooney. Gonna, I think I'm going to change that, uh, though, um, in my description uh, from uh, I used to be a big shot to um, Mother of God, is this the end of Alex? <laughs> <laughs> What's it's that good. from? What's that from? Anybody know what that's from? Wow, little Caesar with uh, with uh, pizza, uh, pizza, huh? <laughs> <laughs> little Caesar with uh, Edward G. Robbins. Oh, wow, mother of God, is this the end of Rico? Yeah, um, right. yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, I always loved those Warner Brothers movies because it was always the last line, the whole movie could have sucked, but the last line was always memorable. You know, um, and that's where I got it. He, he used to be a big shot. So got that from the Roaring Twenties with Humphrey Bogart uh, kills Jimmy Cagney and he stumbles on the steps of this church and dies in the arms of his girlfriend. And as she's dying, the cop comes over and said, uh, who was he? What did he do? He says he was so-and-so. He used to be a big shot. I'm surprised we didn't bring up uh, Paul Rubin's passing. Mm. Oh, yeah. Last week. Yeah, we I felt, week, how many yeah. felt bad about that? I felt pretty bad about it. Marjorie didn't because she's a heartless soul. <laughs> no, there was something about Paul Rubin's and what he contributed to the society, I think, that was very good. Another case, by the way, of somebody who did something for kids, but really adults enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, I was there. I don't know about you guys, but I was there every Saturday morning. I was there with my kids and my kids. I mean, we have things that we repeat that he said to this day. Mm. You know, I mean, oh, yeah. Conan, Conan has this podcast. He rebroadcasts his interview with him from a couple of years ago before he passed away. And it's great listening. You really find you really get a feel for what just a, a kind, friendly, good guy he really was. Yeah, yeah. It was a great interview. But I, I think Pee Wee was a uh, was an amazing creation, you know. Uh, and the, as I as I tried to tell Marjorie to begin with, it was created in an adult atmosphere. It was created by the Groundlings. They used to do the Pee Wee's Pee Wee's Playhouse as a stage show, which then HBO recorded, and that was the first time Pee Wee's Playhouse ever appeared anywhere. And then they when he went over to CBS with a morning show, and uh, uh, every adult I knew watched that thing on Saturday mornings. You know, in, the, in those days, you had to watch it when they played it because mm -hmm. you certainly couldn't watch it later on because you could stream it. You know, 
And if you ever get a chance, you go to YouTube. I think you can probably look up Pee Wee's Playhouse, and there are probably yeah. some that are there. So. It's it's out there streaming somewhere. I forget what network, but that was Phil Phil Hartman from Saturday Night Live was the co-writer. He was the two of them. Yep. Pee Wee oh. was the character, but they the two of them wrote it. Of course, he's no longer with us either. But yeah, well, that, yeah, he uh, Pee Wee died of uh, Paul Rubens died of cancer, and he'd had it for five years, and just didn't tell anybody. You know, I guess you don't tell anybody because if you're in Hollywood, you don't want to be unemployable. You know, and really, it's true. If you're going to die in Hollywood, forget it. You know, they're going to, I mean, how about Jamie Foxx? What was that all about? Mm. It never said. Did you get that? Oh, you never found out. No. It was a stroke, wasn't it? No, I don't know what it was, but he had to go through like two months of rehab for whatever it was. Now that Maybe it was a stroke. Huh? Maybe it was a stroke. Well, with, with that long a rehab, yeah, it could have very well been a stroke. Broke uh, a bad luck. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, uh, there was a real outpouring of, of sympathy for him. Also, you know, you what's amazing to me is you don't know how popular somebody is till they die. And sometimes somebody will die and there's nothing but stories about that person, in spite of the fact you didn't think anybody cared at this point, you know? Sinead O'Connor, too. Yeah, Sinead I was just going to say, I don't know how many music nerds there are out there, but there's a lot of people right now in the music. I'm a music snob and a lot of people are music snobs. And so there's people who love Sinead all the way. And then when she passed, all of these people who were on the other side that didn't like her and kind of used to throw stones at her are now also coming across and saying how much of a genius she is. And a lot of the folks who liked her, but saw her kind of oppressed are like, Hey, what do you, what do you, what are you doing coming over here saying you liked her when you, it's, it's very interesting watching some of these people go back yeah. and forth at her reaction of her passing. But you know, what happens, what happens is that people, uh, uh, when they die, are suddenly recognized for their whole life's work. In other words, you can now look at it like it's a movie, and then they they make their opinions based on that life's work. Uh, and it was, uh, you know, her work was very good. I was never a big fan, to tell you the truth. I didn't really care about her, but I knew that politically she was always on the right side, and she was always standing up for herself, and so on. And that I appreciated. You know, so um, so we lost her last week. Do we lose anybody else? No, I don't think so. Um, oh, you know who we lost? Anybody watch Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul? Yeah. Oh yeah, Margolis. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know the guy who played the uh, the Mexican, I guess. Hector yeah. Salamanca. Uh, Hector Margolis. Salamanca, right? We used to use yeah. a little bell mm -hmm. to communicate. Uh, he died. He was he was my age. He was eighty three, I think. Um, so we lost him and I think that's about it. You know, they only die in threes. All right. So you're going to die and you're in show business. You got to go next week. <laughs> you can't go this week. Um, it just, um, um, you know, who does a nice obituary segment, uh, is CBS Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. They always do a really good one, you know, and, uh, it lasts a couple of minutes. You know, and they they show these various people, and they sometimes they find somebody that you didn't think was you didn't think was still alive, you know, and they made it. So anyway, that that that's that. Now, what else do we have to talk about? Oh, let's talk about Donald Trump, huh? huh? The angry yam. Yeah, let's no. give him a lot of publicity so he gets reelected. Come on. Hey, wait, before you talk about Trump, something happened in Canada. Uh, Justin Trudeau. Uh, split with Getting Sophie, split with his wife. I read that. Split oh, really? with his wife? Yeah. yeah. Wasn't she a pretty good looking woman? Sophie is beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But beautiful. many women think that Justin Trudeau is also beautiful. So yeah. he has that wrap up here. Why are they why are they breaking up? What's the reason? Uh that I don't know. And that really? they're trying to there's oh. there's many, 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 many theories going around. Um, none of which I've I know Does any of it include it. cheating? Uh, there are some that include his preferences and things like that. So his there's all sorts of. What do you mean his preferences? What are you What are you saying now? 
breakfast cereals, Alex. We're talking about breakfast cereals. <laughs> uh, some people think it's raisin bran. Some people think it's corn flakes. Uh, yeah. Some people think it's Cheerios. You know, so it it has not, it has some nothing people to do think with... it's homosexual. Perhaps. Uh, and well, there's nothing, that, nothing, nothing to do with me, Alex. I, I got tired of her snoring. <laughs> <laughs> you see this ad on TV now where they're doing for a sleep mattress, uh, you know, sleep number mattress. And the wife goes, when you snore, you snore like a rhinoceros. And he said, you are a hippopotamus or rhinoceros? Rhinoceros. Rhinoceros. And he says, but you don't know how a rhinoceros snores. She says, yes, I do. I hear you every night. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, good ad. That's what I hate on television, though. Ads on television where the advertising agency isn't smart enough to do two or three different versions of the same commercial. And they keep running the same commercial over and over. The latest one is what, what, uh, uh, uh Lemu the Emu, that, that, oh. that, that series with the little kid and his emu. And he's driving this little car. Yeah. And he says, stay off the freeway. Okay. It's not funny. It's not engaging or anything like that. Can you can you, you name can you all, name what huh? can you name what they're advertising? Uh, Liberty Mutual. Then it's working. No, it's not. Oh. I had to think of that one the other day, and I went Limu the Emu. Limu must stand for Liberty Mutual. Yes. But over and over and over, I mean the same spot, and you get a little tired of it, you know advertising agencies when they come out with an advertising campaign should come out with like three different versions of of an ad so they don't have to run the same one over and over and over again but they do and it drives you nuts um yeah there's arguments on both sides of that but well no i i agree with you by the way i i won't do business with them or that Progressive because of that those flow ads, she drives me nuts. Yes, but the same but, company, Progressive, has the "Don't be like your parents" ads, which are very funny. Yeah, yep. but uh, <laughs> the repetition is is the key, and there's all the data out there. I mean, that's my my area of expertise. The the data shows you're not the customer that's going to. Well, gonna I, do, I used but, to be in I used to be in advertising too. Yeah, it used to be my area of expertise. Yeah, but but back and, then it was smoke signals. Now it's TV. That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> Drum you, beating drums with. We found kids. if you use cedar over pine, you got your <laughs> message across. <laughs> Couldn't afford the oak. Huh? Yeah, cheap agency. But, no, but the thing is that what I what I the thing that um, I I honestly believe and I always believed is there are two kinds of there are, funny commercials do not sell a product. And they don't sell it because you're so busy laughing at the commercial that you can't remember what the product was they were trying to sell you, okay? Uh, years ago, there was a guy named Stan Freeberg who literally ruled the advertising roost with funny commercials, and they were really hilarious commercials. But then when they did a, a, a test of them, they found nobody could remember what the name of the product was. So it really the most the best commercial you can do probably is just a direct commercial hey we're liberty mutual we have car insurance make sure you get the best car insurance we're liberty mutual they right? got you with brand recognition you remember the brand yeah that's yeah. what there's there's different purposes for your ads but those are all brand recognition ads that you know it it's it's in your head i mean when yeah but it who, can't who be here, brand who recognition. Here can, yeah but who who here doesn't know all the lyrics to that freaking cars for kids <laughs> kids are grandparents by now. Yeah, the same kids over and over and over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it, or I don't know if in your area they have that Empire Carpet. Oh yeah, everyone knows the phone number that that, that that's in that market that's listened to it. I don't know what it is. It's Empire, <laughs> but I don't know what the, what it is. Yeah, but but see here but here's what I, here's what I always felt. Tell me if you disagree with me on this. Sure. Commercials that get remembered the best are the ones that are irritating. Mm -hmm. That that irritation makes you remember the commercial, makes you remember the product. And in spite of the fact that you say, I will never buy that product because those ads are so irritating, you remember that product. The, the reality oh, is you're, you're correct, it. but it's ad advertising that can trigger an emotion, whether it's irritation, 
happiness, mm -hmm. joy, whatever it is, if they can get to trigger an emotion that you tie to the brand, they mm -hmm. win. It's well, that that's the that's the purpose of it. If it's I, just I, I if it's just information. I don't know if this is wrong, but I used to get an erection watching Cocoa Puffs commercials. <laughs> you too? <laughs> you too? Yeah, it's that it's damn bird. He's just so damn bird. sexy. Me yeah. too. <laughs> now, the Lucky Charms one's a different story. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about that. Lucky much. Charms. Oh yeah. 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 That's yeah. not for. That's not for YouTube. I'll get you. <laughs> go, I'll get see, you. go see the Barbie you, movie. You, you, you won't get monetized. <laughs> well, listen, we've run out of we've run out of time here at the wonderful <laughs> pop up show, which was a little light on people today. But the, well, we had Mandy that, that made us a full ten. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, you're wonderful people, and I love you all. And uh, whenever you're in New York, uh, please give us a call. We won't invite you over, but please give us a call. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yell up from the street to your window? No, I mean, people... Alex! I mean, if Charlie <laughs> came and said, uh, I, I, you know, um, uh, I, I need a place to stay, Charlie could stay here. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, and we don't ask you to take your shoes off, which you wouldn't want to do anyway. So. <laughs> uh, 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 I think the world of Charlie. I think the world of all of you. Charlene, thank you so much for being with us again. And Paula, I'm glad that you defended the Barbie movie because uh, your best friend Marjorie is such a snob about that film. <laughs> such a snob about it. Uh, also, thanks to our good friend Len LaFrisco and to Andrew Deutsch and to Marjorie Miller and to uh, Charlie Wallace and, of course, the fabulous Mike Chisholm up in there in Canada uh, where everybody is for apologizing for everything. So. Yep. Do you have anything right. to apologize for today? <laughs> <laughs> Not publicly. I mean, I understand when you go go to your churches up there, you actually sit with a, 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 a clergyman in a booth and he asks you to apologize. Not and then he apologizes to us up here. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, the guy who signs off each and every show. See, I remembered you today. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. What, what's your name again? Uh, let's see. Oh, I forgot it. Uh, <laughs> you forgot it. Edward Berger <laughs> signs us off as he usually does by saying. That's all, folks. Please. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks. Thanks See you next week. <laughs>